How we doing guys and welcome back. All right, you guys might be wondering what's this all about? Why is he doing two different videos? Well, when I went back and started looking at some of the comments, I actually got a pretty good response on that last video. I was pretty shocked to see how many people watched it and uh, had a number of people comment on it. A lot of you guys had some good comments. Some of you guys didn't have some great comments. I mean, they're all good comments. I mean, I have no problem with getting feedback and stuff like that, even if it's negative toward me. I guess I'm busted because uh, I'll be honest with you, I've been cutting wood now um, since about 2009. I, that's when I bought that MS460. And I really, I've been around uh, chainsaws and stuff like that for a better part of my life, but um, I didn't really actually start using them myself until I got a little bit older. So um, anyway, because of that, um, the way that I've always sharpened the chains is I've always used a Dremel tool because that's how my dad taught me how to do it. But um, after watching all these videos here, what I've learned from doing that is that I've learned that the teeth get hard and they don't stay sharp as long. And so I've been trying to hand sharpen while well, those 32 inch bars that I was using with the 32 inches of chain that, you know, you got all the drivers and all these teeth that you got to sharpen and whatever. I ended up, uh, I, obviously I'm not that great at it. So that being said, I actually got a brand new 28 inch chain on here, or a brand new chain for a 28 inch bar for my steel. And we're gonna try another cut with these. I'm even gonna show the tack on these. I got a little cheap tack reader so that I can read what the RPMs are and kind of show you guys what that's doing. And then we'll make a few more cuts. Uh, I'm thinking about even going out and cutting a tree down and making a couple of cuts on a smaller tree. So anyway, um, see you guys in a minute. We'll uh, start going with the cutting. Okay guys, we're gonna try this again. I'm actually gonna have my daughter help me. She's gonna be running the tack for the camera so you guys can see what that's doing. I'm gonna make a couple of cuts in here. With each saw, I'll change the bar out in between with the chain so that way it has the same bar, same chain, everything's the same on it so you guys can get a little bit better read for those of you that wanted to see that. So let's give it a whirl.
right guys for those of you guys that don't do a lot of cutting and are kind of new into this a good idea to do would be to clean these out i buy these little brushes i think i get these at fleet farm or walmart i can't remember i think i got it from fleet farm uh but anyway you just take and just brush all the stuff out you don't want the oiler which is here to get all full of, of sawdust and plugged up you don't want your clutch drum in here to get all plugged up because it'll cause extra wear and it'll cause it to get too warm and it's also a good idea with your air compressor at the end of the day or whenever you get done cutting to come in here and clean out all the fins and all that stuff anything that would get plugged up with stuff to prevent airflow coming through um, you want to get all this sawdust and all the chips and stuff like that out there or at least as many of them as you can get out so that you don't have any premature wear or any problems with heat or anything like that Something else that I also do when I'm done and I'm done cutting, I don't usually do this in between just a quick bar change like this, but I will do it here quick just to show you guys. I'll take a little putty knife like this and I just run it down through the channel in between everything and it helps clean it out. I also a lot of times will take brake clean and I'll spray brake clean in here and it'll get that rolling nice like that so that you can uh, actually tell that it's rolling good. I come through here and I just clean out. You can feel it in the channel, all this extra stuff that comes out of there. And I usually take a pick or an awl or something and come in through the holes where the bar oil comes through. So that way it flows freely into the bar and lubricates the chain and keeps everything working good. Those of you guys that don't know, if I can see it here, you see this little hole right here? That is the hole that the bar oil gets into from the chainsaw, from the oiler. They're on both sides. That'd be the hole right there. You want to make sure that that's clear so that you can actually see light coming through it. I don't know if I'll be able to get it in the camera for you or not. There you go. There's a little bit. So that you can see there's light coming through that like that. And that's what you want. If that's plugged up, then it's not oiling your bar and it's not oiling your chain and not doing you any favors. It's gonna cost you money in the long run. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll also take the brush and I will brush off the drivers and the teeth and everything on the chain, but this one is not really dirty right at the moment, so I'm not that worried about it. Some of you guys wonder, well, why is he putting it upside down? Well, when you're using it, um, if you're watching a lot of guys that do a lot of sawing and you know, professional loggers and stuff like that, they'll tell you that these bars need to be dressed a lot of times. And what that means is you need to make sure you've got a flat surface in which for the, for the uh, chain to roll onto, because otherwise you'll get a groove onto it. And I rolled this one upside down for this particular video because I've been using this bar quite a bit and I'm actually getting a bit of a groove here I need to take and sand that and uh, you don't want that you want it to be smooth you want to be able to have a, a flat surface for the drivers and the bottom of the straps to go through to run on so that you don't get any extra wear the chain doesn't curve around you don't start getting the curving effect or anything like that coming through on your logs and stuff like that when you're cutting with them so that's why I did that there isn't really a right side up and an upside down when it comes to bars. You want to flip them. Um, a lot of times, I know a lot of the loggers will tell you that the time to flip your bar is the time when your teeth are needing to be sharpened and you got to start sharpening those. That's when you should flip your bar around. And it just keeps it even. It wears it even on the top and the bottom. How I do it. With the longer bars, I'll put it on like that. Usually I put the chain on after I put the bar on. This time, for whatever reason, I didn't. And then I'll turn the adjuster screw on it to get it to where it actually tensions up enough, tightens up enough with enough tension that it uh, puts the drivers up through the bottom of the channel. 
and the chain just touches the bottom of the bar and then I put my side cover on. nuts when you're putting the bar nuts back on it's always a good idea to put them on the same way you took them off so you don't flip them around because the threads on the bar studs will actually stretch when you tighten them down and they'll be the same way then when you're tightening them back on again now, I, as far as tightening the chain on there. I'll go like that, I'll lift up on it, and I'll just get it just to where it comes up and just touches the bottom of the bar, and that's what I consider tight. And I just tighten down my nine bar nuts. And you're good to go. And the other one, didn't need to warm up quite as much or quite as long because it was already started before the video. This one hasn't been started yet, so it may take me just a minute here. Mm-hmm. 
Well, there's that part of it. Um, I personally think that the steel is does a better job than the Holtz Forma does. Um, I think that's pretty obvious when you're watching the video. Um, the RPMs aren't exactly the same, but they were fairly close. So, I don't know. I guess you guys can make your own decision on it. I think I'm going to go out in the woods and we're going to try cutting a tree down, a smaller tree than what this one is. This one's pretty good size. And we'll see what it does. So, but I wanted to do this portion of the video and I wanted to do another video because I had a lot of guys saying, uh, commenting about my lack of skill when it comes to hand sharpening my chainsaws. And uh, well, I don't, don't claim to be an expert. I'm certainly not professional at it. I'm working at it and getting better every day, but it, uh, it's a work in progress. Um, just so you guys are aware, some of you guys were commenting about the dust and that it shouldn't be throwing dust, it should be throwing chips. So that is a brand new chain. And I mean a brand new chain. And these are the kinds of chips I'm getting out of that chain on this lock. I don't know why, but that's what we're getting. It should be a heavier chip than that. Now on a new chain, you should be able to hand file it and you can get them down to where you start throwing better chips because you can get the top plate and the side plate a lot better. You can get into the gullet more and you'll get more of the surface area of the tooth that you're actually cutting with. And so on a brand new chain, you don't have quite that same effect. But usually when I have a brand new chain on, there are bigger chips than this. I'm not sure why on this bigger log, if it's because of the log itself. It's an oak log. It's an old dead oak that my daycare lady for our kids, they had at their house. And it was really, really dead for a lot of years. And they finally got it cut down this year. And I asked if I could have it just so I could make some YouTube videos. And they said, yeah. So, but anyway, just so you guys could see, I know some of you guys were commenting on that. Like I said, I have no problem with you guys making comments on it. I don't have a problem with uh, you guys criticizing me on anything either. Um, if you guys are going to be swearing a lot on there, I'll probably delete the comment. I won't tolerate that. This is meant for everybody, including younger people, to come on here and try and learn from, from some of the stuff that I do. I'm not the greatest teacher in the world, but I just wanted to be able to show some of you guys what I'm doing and do a little bit of a comparison so you guys can get more of a feel as to what's going on. There's a lot of guys out there that are really good at cutting. They're really good with chainsaws. They know them inside and out. They know how to properly adjust them. They know how to tear them down all the way down to the main bearings and everything and rebuild them and port them and whatnot. I'd like to learn how to do a lot of that kind of stuff, but as it is right now, I don't know. I'm learning. I'm watching videos every day. You can ask my kids. They wake up a lot of times to me sleeping on the couch because I work nights. I get home in the morning and I start watching chainsaw videos to the sound of chainsaws running on the TV. So anyway, we're going to go out in the woods and drop a tree and we'll do a few cuts on a, a smaller log here. Let's see. Should we do that one? No, that one's got a lot of branches on the top and she's leaning, which is fine, but it'd have to land in all that brush. We do that one. No, that's pretty tangled up. I don't want to deal with that today. This looks like a good contender. I think I can slip it through in there. Yep, I think we'll do this one.
Okay guys, there you have it. I was gonna use that MS660 to do a little cutting on this tree, but I think you guys get the general idea. So anyhow, let me know what you think. If you guys have some input, especially for the younger crowd out there that maybe doesn't have as much experience or you know hasn't really been around this kind of stuff at all, feel free to go ahead and comment. And I think that's a, a great thing when uh, guys that have a lot of experience and a lot of know-how to do this stuff can actually teach other people. You know, it doesn't matter if they're your same age, if they're older than you are, if they're younger or whatever. I think if we all help each other, we'll all make things a lot better for everybody out here. I know I've learned a lot of stuff by watching these videos and from watching other guys that really know what they're doing. And uh, I continue to learn every time I come out and cut. That's one of the things I've told a lot of the people that I've talked to about this for myself that Every time I come out here and every time I cut, I always learn something new. I mean, there's always, for me, there's always a new technique or, you know, something with compression on the tree, the way it lays or whatever, or the way it's leaning or whatnot, that I generally tend to learn when I'm out here. So, but this is, this is my heaven. This is, <laughs> for me, this is, it doesn't get any better than being out here in the, in nature and cutting trees. And I just, I find a lot of peace when I'm out here doing this kind of stuff. So. Anyway, guys, uh, take care. I hope that uh, everybody's doing well. You're all in good health and everything. And I hope to see you guys around here in the future. So thanks for watching.